able to like adapt past those warm weather climates until we started copying the animals and creating certain techniques and clothing and shelters that mimic the ways that they kept warm. And so as we learned those ways, we were able to expand um, our populations to colder climates. I have a bunch of furry things I'm going to pass around. So fur works in a couple different ways. Um, it uses conduction and radiation. Um, and the, the fur, because it's so fluffy, it creates kind of this, this layer where there's air mass, right? There's heat trapped in the fur, and that's what allows animals to keep warm. So you'll see like little foxes and stuff curled up, kind of sunbathing in the daytime, and they have their little tail kind of tucked around over their nose, trying to keep their nose warm. Um, and fur also has uh, this sort of like light scattering ability to diffuse and it diffuses like thermal radiation from happening. Um, so they have this amazing shelter that's just on their backs. And animals also underneath have uh, a big fat layer of fat, right? So they have fat and then their fur. Um, and birds are very similar. Here's some uh, goat vest clothing. So the Colby was saying vests are really good because it kind of keeps your core body temperature up. Um, the stills allow, allows you mobility. The goat and the and deer and that sort of family, they have uh, hollow hairs. And that hollow hair also allows um, for air mass to kind of be trapped and yeah, keep the, the, core, the body temperature up uh, and warm. So it traps that warm air in the hollow hairs. And wool works a very similar way. Wool is very like all over the place, right? It's like kind of tangly and crazy, and um, because it's so kinked and, and all over the place, it cr it creates these little chambers where the air mass can get can um, collect. And so it's a really insulative, really warm. You guys can try these mittens on. Way um, of layering. Yeah, this is a technique called uh, wet felting, and you can take just uh, fine carded wool right off the sheep's back. You card it with some brushes. You make it really fluffy like this. You get it wet with soap and water. And you kind of pat it and rub it. Um, and you can create things like little booties to go in your, in your boots or mittens or hat. Um, and yeah, things like that. Wet felting and um, it was about, I think like six to 8,000 years ago they developed that. And skins, people have been using skins for like a hundred thousand years. The big animals like deer and buffalo and elk and those ones have a bigger skin so it's more usable than say something like a rat. You know, you can't really use a rat to make clothing because it's so small. But using things like deer you can create little pieces of clothing like this buckskin skirt. Um, it's nice because it's really breathable as well as warm. So you can actually take your mouth and blow through it and you can feel the air coming out the other side. This um, skin here I actually tan with acorns. It's another form of, of brain tan or bark tanning hides um, and making them usable for, for wear. Some, some of these other ones, the more older technique is using brains or some sort of oil based thing. Some people used eggs, some cultures use poop. They rubbed in. <laughs> haven't tried that one yet. <laughs> Some people use urine. So there's a lot of different ways that people tanned hides traditionally. And the thicker the skin, the warmer it is. So something like a goat is nice for like summer clothing, like a nice summer shirt or something. Something a little thicker like a deer is better for maybe a jacket.